MBA 633 instructional video prepared by Professor Amit Dada, School of Management, George Mason University. In this segment, we'll work a problem in hypothesis testing about the population mean. It will be a two-sided test and the population standard deviation is unknown. So we have an unknown sigma. So the problem setting is the following. We have a bottling plant and when the filling machine at, a soft drink, uh, at the soft drink bottling plant is running properly, the average volume of fluid in the bottle should be 16 ounces. And from time to time, we check whether the machine is running properly. So 40 bottles are poured from the filling station every hour and measured. On one of these checks, the sample average for the 40 bottles was found to be 16.32 ounces. And the sample standard deviation was found to be 0.8 ounces. Notice that the population standard deviation is not known. We are going to have to use the sample standard deviation. And we are also told to use a 5% level of significance, meaning I'm willing to tolerate a 5% chance of making a type 1 error. In other words, rejecting the null when in fact it's true. So our first step in this hypothesis testing problem is to set up the hypothesis, the claim and the counterclaim. And you remember one guideline that I mentioned is try to set up the hypothesis in such a way that whatever it is that you're trying to confirm or establish or whatever suspicion it is that you're trying to confirm, try to make that be the result of a rejection of the null because we are controlling for type 1 error. So whenever we end up rejecting the null, we know that we are reasonably certain that we haven't made uh, a type 1 error, that we haven't rejected the uh, null hypothesis by mistake because we are working the hypothesis test uh, in that manner. So with this particular narrative, since I'm trying to check whether or not the machine is working properly, if it isn't working properly, I would like for that to be confirmed as a result of a rejection of the null. That is why I set up this mu not equal to 16 as the alternate hypothesis because it would uh, if my suspicions are true that the machine might not be working properly that would be the result of a rejection of the null okay so that means that the null would have to be mu equal to 16 if the machine is running fine then the average should be 16 if it isn't then the average volume in the bottle is not equal to 16 either it's less than 16 or it's more than 16 either way we have a problem if it's more than 16 then uh, customers are not paying for what they got and if it's less than 16 customers didn't get what they pay for so now we have the uh, claim and the counterclaim set up we'll try to solve the problem using both methods the p-value method and the critical value method and just as an aside to save uh, time notice that the since the population standard deviation is not given the sample statistic in this case, which is the sample mean, we know has a t-distribution. And since all hypothesis testing starts with the assumption that the null is true as an equality and then asks the question, would we be seeing um, a, a, a sample statistic as extreme as the one we saw if the null were true as an equality? That's how the logic will proceed. So under that assumption, the mean of the sampling distribution of x bar here would be 16 ounces as you can see and it's a t distribution the standard deviation of the sample mean is s the sample standard deviation divided by the square root of n which in this case would be 0.8 ounces divided by square root of 40. so let's look at the critical value method first what the critical value method says is start off with your level of significance you're willing to tolerate a five percent chance of making a type one error that would tell you how uh, what value you would consider as very extreme so it would give you a critical value this critical value is the value beyond which you would consider any test statistic to be extreme so five percent i'm willing to accept a five percent chance of making a type one error that means i my critical value of t how far away from the 16 ounces it needs to be I need to be far enough away from 16 such that the area to the right of the critical value and the area to the left of minus t critical these two together these two yellow areas together have to be five percent okay so i would have to use the t inverse function of course since i know the probability and i want a position on the x-axis so let's see where that what that gives us so equal to t inverse of five percent the two tails together is five percent degrees of freedom is sample size minus one is 39 is 2.02 .02. the physical interpretation of the 2.02 .02 is that 
any test statistic that is more than 2.02 standard deviations away from 16 ounces I will consider very extreme so let's see what the test statistic actually ends up uh, 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 being so I got a sample mean of 16.32 let's standardize it and notice I'm using the symbol T because the distribution sampling distribution is a T distribution so I got 16.32 ounces as my sample mean my assumed mean of the sampling distribution is 16 that's what it would be if the null were true as an equality divided by the standard deviation of the sample mean which is 0.8 divided by square root of 40 so let's see what that t value turns out to be so I can see that the numerator is of course 16.32 minus 16 which is 0.32 ounces and the denominator is 0.8 ounces uh, sorry 0.8 divided by square root of 40 and I divide one by the other so I get 2.53 all right so so my test statistics so the sample mean I got of 16.32 is to the right of this critical value my threshold is 2.02 and my threshold uh, is, is 2.02 but the actual value that I got is 2.52 is 2.53 so I will consider that beyond the critical value hence it is uh, uh, is extreme enough so my physical interpretation of the 2.53 is that if the null were true as an equality it is highly unlikely that I would have gotten the 16.32 by chance since my T test statistic is greater than the critical value I end up rejecting the null that's my conclusion now let's see what we would do with the p-value the p-value approach is somewhat different the p-value approach says well you observed a sample mean of 16.32 ounces what is the likelihood that you would have seen at least as extreme a value as 16.32 if the null were true as an equality notice that we are not starting off by saying a value has to be just so large in order for it to be considered extreme here we are computing a probability so what is the probability that t is greater than or equal to 2.52 where did i get the 2.52 from oops this doesn't look nice let me clean that up it's 2.52 so where did I get the 2.52 from I just borrowed uh, 2.53 rather where did I get the 2.53 from I just borrowed it from here since I've already standardized the 16.32 ounces that I got there's no need to do that calculation again so that is what the test statistic uh, that I obtained the question is how likely is it to obtain that test statistic of 2.53 standard deviations uh, assuming that the null uh, that, that's what we got assuming that the null is true as an equality okay so this I would get using of course the t distribution the t dist function so my position on the x-axis is 2.52 so how likely is it that I would so I'm computing a probability here is equal to t dist my position on the x-axis is 2.53 how many degrees of freedom is 39 and tails I will give two notice that this is a two-sided test why because the alternate is mu not equal to 16 so mm, I could be I could reject the null either at the low end or at the high end the null could be rejected either by the sample statistic being lower than 16 significantly lower than 16 or the sample statistic being significantly higher than 16 so I'm looking at two tails here that's why I put two for this parameter here and I come up with a probability of point uh, 1.5 percent okay <clears throat> so what's the physical interpretation of this 1.5 percent what we're saying here is if the null were true as an equality in other words if the average volume of uh, fluid being filled in this bottle was in fact 16 ounces then 
there is only a 1.5 percent chance that i would be observing a sample statistic as extreme as 16.32 or higher as well as symmetric value on the lower side since so this is a two-sided test so what the the end result we have here is that this is the p-value okay the probability of getting a sample statistic as extreme as the one we got so we have a situation where the p-value is less than alpha alpha is our threshold so 1.5 percent is less than five percent i'm willing to accept a five percent chance of making a type one error and what this is telling us is that if the null were true as an equality there's only a 1.5 percent chance that i would be seeing as extreme of a, at least as extreme a value in the sample as what i just saw so given that p is less than alpha i would still end up rejecting the null so reject h0 so notice that the conclusions are the, exactly the same you cannot use uh, the two methods and then end up with two different conclusions for the same problem so this is a two-sided hypothesis test involving the population mean uh, with an unknown sigma so uh, it's a very structured process of doing hypothesis testing and in my opinion the hardest part is setting up the hypothesis correctly after that it's fairly mechanical if a little bit tedious at times if you don't know the population standard deviation when you're working with hypothesis involving the population mean if you don't know the population standard deviation you use the t distribution if you do know the population standard deviation then you use the normal distribution that's the only difference otherwise the logic is exactly the same you start off setting up the hypothesis and then ask yourself if the null were true as an equality would i be seeing a, a sample statistic at least as extreme as the one i obtained uh, uh, from from the sample